I also work with other units on campus to help maximize their their own you know social media presence. Uh, just a little bit about my background. Uh, I have a background in web design and development. My former job, I was running the main university accounts, and essentially we were in charge of the web presence. Over time, uh, we created some accounts, and we were finding that the web presence was expanding out to social media platforms. And if we were going to promote what we do, we needed to go where the people live, and that's social media. So more of my time was spent doing, uh, creating posts and so forth. And eventually, uh, um, people with a higher pay grade decided they we needed to do this full time, and uh, so they created the position. And I was fortunate enough to be intimately uh, knowledgeable about the requirements. So they. They chose me to, to do that. And here I am. Awesome. And here you are. And here we are. And as everyone probably saw as I minimized my screen really quickly, I yeah. have started the webinar recording. So thumbs up. You will all get a link with this archive uh, later on this week. So yay, go technology. Yeah. Well, let's, yeah, exactly. Woohoo. Let's get started. Bruce. I really like to um, have you set the yeah. stage before we dive into mm -hmm. the campaign. So at the University of Florida, how are admission decisions delivered to students? Well, it's, you know, it's different now than it used to be. Um, it used to be you got the decision and you waited for the mailman to come and, and that sort of thing. Um, we've actually changed that experience slightly in that we deliver decisions to prospective students online um, and um, so so we use a portal called ISIS and our students are intimately involved with ISIS throughout this admissions process because they use that to check the status of the different parts of their application and uh, so they know to log in and they're also informed of a particular date and time our uh, decision date uh, so they know about that date they know when to log in and when to get their decision um, admitted students, are, they also receive a letter, but that comes a week later. Um, I don't believe our denied students actually receive that letter, but, uh, but our admitted students do. And, um, but the first, the first time they're informed of their status is actually by logging into our website and checking it out. Cool. So I imagine that is probably the case for a lot of other institutions now, um, although certainly there are still some that, that go the very traditional route, just right. sending out the decision letters. And I think what's important to note is uh, the campaign that you're about to hear about today um, really can be in either case, but um, you know, Bruce did have the good fortune that there's technology involved in the admission decisions, so uh, you know, so that you'll be hearing some strategies that are that are focused on that fact. But that please don't take away that you can't do this if you don't have that technology. So, um, so Bruce, hashtag UF17 was very well planned, and I am aware that you did a similar, um, maybe less coordinated effort the year before in 2012 right. for the incoming class of 2016. So can you start off by sharing your experiences with hashtag UF16 and what you learned? Well, you're right. Uh, UF16 was definitely not as coordinated. Um, it was essentially a, a game time decision where I thought, well, you know, we, we could, you know, I, I had a feeling that students were going to be talking online saying, you know, around the decision date and time saying, yay, I got in, uh, hooray. Um, and so what I did was create uh, a, you know, some keyword searches on Twitter, um, looked for students that were mentioning us either as University of Florida or Florida Gators or whatever. Um, and then I tried to encourage those students to mention or to add the UF16 hashtag. Um, you know, I did, I, because it was a game time decision, I didn't add any uh, you know, I didn't collect any statistics. I didn't collect any analytics or, or, or anything like that. It was just because I worked in it. I used to work in admissions, so I kind of just wanted to be part of that. You know, the conversations that were happening, and it just to welcome students and so forth. And, but what I ended up finding out uh, from last year uh, was that there was only really one student that that tweeted something negative about not getting into the University of Florida. I mean, it was pretty negative, but it. You know, I was very surprised to see there was only one. You know, and I was looking. Trust me, and I only found the one student. <laughs> uh, and, and, and so it occurred to me that students that were getting into the university, they were shouting from the rooftops, extremely excited. Uh, but the students that didn't get admitted, they weren't mentioning us by name if they were talking about uh, talking about not getting admitted. They may have said something kind of general, if at all. But I think you know, for the most part, students aren't really being very demonstrative about not getting into at least to the University of Florida. 
Um, so that I thought that was really revealing. So let's talk a little bit about the campaign strategy and the planning for mm -hmm. UF17 um, because I think it's you know I think planning a campaign is just really important to ensuring the success of the campaign. Uh, so what was the first step to get buy-in internally for UF17? Uh, well, the first step was actually to do some planning. You know, the first time I, I, I got some positive reinforcement, so this time I knew that if I really wanted to do this right, that we would, I would have to work with admissions prior to the decision date and to have a, you know, basic conversation about their process and, you know, what happens after decisions are released, that sort of thing. Uh, I wanted to get a sense of, like, what kind of communications they have for, you know, to, with their students and, and how they did you know how they released the decisions and what kind of what kind of you know text was used in those particular letters and that sort of thing. What I what I came to find out was uh, something that it didn't occur to me until you know until I sat down and talked with the admissions director. Um, you know, being at admissions can be at times a, a very thankless job, and that you know if you're ultimately successful and a student gets the outcome they're looking for, then you never get to see them again, or you don't hear from them again because you know you you've they, they transition into a new status. They've actually been admitted. So for the most part, you don't ever get to, you know, as an admissions uh, processor or a manager or officer, you know, you have a decision date, and then the next week, um, you're not getting calls from students that are, like, happy they got in. Oh, thank you. You're getting calls from <laughs> students that, that, you know, that didn't get in. And um, that, that was really, that made me sad for them, you know. Um, so, so when I explained to them that on social media what I found last year was that you know there was a lot of positive conversation very little negative um, I, I kind of explained to them that maybe we should promote that hashtag to to admitted students put it on their admin screens and then you know that would give us an opportunity to collect those conversations and then I could kind of give some give them something to prove to them that you know they, they you know things did turn out okay do you have any advice for the attendees who may be sitting there saying, hey, you know, I don't think my admissions office is that willing to buy into this idea? Well, I hope. What, you're asking for advice. What, would I, what kind of advice yeah, I would Yeah, what would you tell them? Um, I, I think I'd first uh, ask those admissions folks that they're having trouble converting. Uh, maybe they can, hopefully they're watching this webinar. Um, maybe I would say, you know, have them look at the replays now that we've gotten it recorded. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to show some examples and explain in, in more detail how this was successful and how it 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 feels it feels good to see that all of that all of that joy happening, right? But I want to, you know, I want to I would also impress uh, the importance of creating connections uh, with students, you know, at the time that they're most excited about your college or university. You know, the, these students have a lot of options. You know, now now we're now we're competing with online universities and online colleges and so forth. I mean, all of these students. I knew the students that apply here. They're very talented, very smart. Uh, they they have a lot of opportunities, and um, and so you know, if we have an opportunity to celebrate with them that achievement of getting into your school, I mean, you'd be you'd be crazy to pass that up. I mean, think of you know, the, their goal. A lot of these students, their goal has been for a very long time to get accepted to be acknowledged. I mean, they, there's a lot of students that feel like they're a part of the Gator Nation, but now they're getting mm -hmm. acknowledged by the school, a, a confirmation of that. You, you certainly don't want to pass up that, that opportunity. And, and the other thing I would say, and I, I understand a lot of people are kind of, they have trepidation about getting into social media, generally speaking, because the idea that there's all this negative um, conversation happening, and there certainly is, uh, but, you know, you, you can't, I, I, I I think one of the conversations I had with admissions was we can't continue to to kind of ignore the opportunity of celebrating these students that got in for fear of upsetting students that didn't get in. Um, there is a lot of competition. We need to celebrate those kids that made it in. We need them to feel connected. So, you know, just because we're celebrating those those students doesn't mean we're trying to insult the students that didn't get in. We we just we didn't we need to take advantage of this this very unique opportunity. 
Absolutely. So like you said, uh, you decided to put the hashtag on the admit screen for the students who were going to check their status online. Right. Mm -hmm. Did you just put the hashtag on the screen? Did you write out, hey, uh, student, here's a hashtag. Tweet no, your acceptance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what I tried, to, <laughs> it's a great question. So what I tried to avoid was creating banner, you know, we have banner blindness. So if you see a big block on a, on a web page, you usually assume it's an advertisement and you, your eyes move away from it. Uh, right. what, what I, yeah, so what I wanted to do was uh, to add the hashtag to the admin screen and, and when I was kind of talking about what I wanted to do with this thing, I didn't, I made sure to let the, the admissions folks know that I didn't want to take away from what they were already doing. I mean, they've taken a long time to craft this letter and it's actually well written. It's very nice and you know, I don't want this thing to have this gaudy you have 17 button, you know, with the with the band da 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 da. I didn't want any of that. <laughs> I just I wanted to make it simple. So, you know, I, I kind of look to what uh television networks do. You know, if you, you watch any program on Fox, um uh, uh they have in the corner they'll have a hashtag and they don't necessarily explain what that hashtag is. I think the assumption is that if you see that hashtag Hashtag that are using Twitter, that are using uh, Instagram, they see that hashtag and they go, aha. Station and, and coordinating a little bit. So I wanted it to be understated. I think it worked. I think I think so too. I mean, I'm looking at the screen and, and it's there. And, and if I'm on Twitter, I know what that means and I know what to do with it. So that's I think that's really smart. Um, but oh, you know, so oh, I've got one other th one other thing I want to mention. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but this is no, very. Oh, right. th oh, sorry. Uh, this is very important that we did not put the UF17 hashtag on the denial letters. Okay, that seems kind of obvious and simple, but you want to make mm -hmm. sure not to do that. We didn't promote we didn't promote this hashtag in advance. You know, we didn't want to let the cat out of the bag and kind of tell people about it because there's some students that really wanted to get in that didn't, and we didn't want them to have this. We didn't want to give this hashtag. Um, so, so, so we made sure that only the admins uh, saw uh, saw that and uh, put it on their screens, and we kind of cautioned people not to not to not to talk about it in advance. You know, I feel like that. Is obvious. That's something that's obvious that you wouldn't do, but it takes somebody to to point that out in order for the hashtag not to go on the denials. So is that, you know that's something that could easily right. have been an oversight. And so it's, I think you guys were really smart to to identify that because that could have opened up a can of worms. Um, no, absolutely, and, and yeah. it helped me because we did that. Uh, it it also helped me to convince the admissions folks that oh this. You know, we're not even giving this hashtag. We're only giving it to admitted students. So it made it easier for them to right. kind of understand and um, uh, ultimately approve. Definitely. So you got admissions on board, right? Yep. So oh, yeah. I imagine, though, there are other departments on your campus and that perhaps you needed to bring them on board, too. So how did you facilitate that? Oh, a great another great question. So we've got a we've got a um, several different ways of communicating with uh, with the social media managers. So what I did was contact those other units through a listserv that we have, which is kind of funny. Our social media managers are using listservs. But, uh, <laughs> but we also, I, I, I swear we have other means. Um, we also have a social media managers Facebook group, so I made, made sure to, to use both. Um, and I, I let them know that, you know, about the hashtag, but I also let them know that, that we have support from admissions. Uh, my, 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 my thought there, what, my thought in terms of telling these other social media managers was, so, so I let them know about the decision date and time, and I know, let them know about the hashtag, but the problem is that, you know, the, the release time was at 5 p.m. on a Friday, and uh, most of you know what eight, like 5 p.m. on a Friday means. That means, you know, um, anywhere else but work. So, um, so I sent it out, but it was more like, a, you know, this is what's happening. I understand that I didn't say this, but in my head, I'm thinking no one's as nutty as I am about social media, uh, perhaps. So, um, you know, anyone who is, you know, out there and is managing the account, maybe from their phone, who's tweeting, who feels like jumping in, please do. This is, I think, you know, I, I might have said, you know, you'll you'll see a lot of positive conversation. Feel free to jump in. But I, I didn't have, I didn't anticipate what kind of response I'd get. You know, I basically anything that I got beyond my coordinated my my conversations with the students. 
a anything else is like icing on the cake. So, um, so I wasn't really sure what was going to happen. So you also created something kind of special to share with the accepted students and right. also extend the US-17 hashtag mm -hmm. and the brand of University of Florida. So I know what it is, but why don't you let our webinar participants right. in on this? Right. Um, so so someone, on the, uh, someone on Twitter just said that, that their school is still old school. And, um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm kind of old school. Uh, it, as well, um, even though I'm doing this Twitter stuff, uh, I'm tweeting about old school stuff. It's funny, but um, so so you know, back in the day, back in my day, um, you know, students got a they got a gift when they when they got admitted. You know, they they got the letter, and and this letter was something they got a packet along with it, and it was something that they could have that we gave to them. Besides just telling them they're admitted, a lot of times they take that letter and they frame it and all sorts of things like that. Well, I wanted to. I wanted the opportunity to give them a gift as well, you know. Uh, you know, in addition to saying you're admitted, here's something. Here's something that's for you. So we were fortunate in that uh, a week prior to uh, the the decision day, we added an additional designer here at, uh, in university relations, and she's she's wicked talented. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I gave her a sense of of what uh, what I was trying to do, which was essentially give them a gift and to celebrate these students. And she she looked at me and she. You know, she nodded, and then she went away to her computer lab, uh, and messed with her test tubes and beakers, and came up with these really terrific Facebook uh, asked for cover photos and and avatars and things. She came up with all of these brilliant designs that basically look like a celebration. They say, you know, I got in. I'm a it's official. I'm a Gator. It's great to be a Florida Gator. Um, and so. I saw this as an opportunity to help spread the message about the hashtag, but also kind of obviously, you know, put an arm around them and say, good job. Um, the ancillary benefit, obviously, is, you know, you see the UF brand there and it, it's being reinforced as students are putting these on their, you know, their Facebook uh, avatars or uh, profile photos and, and, and uh, cover photos and such. We also use those images on our main university Facebook page and on the alumni page and all of that just to kind of share that information too. Um, it was, uh, you know, it wasn't something we could obviously, it, it wasn't something that we could easily track in terms of how many people are using those images. But again, this is kind of a feel good measure. So I wasn't terribly concerned about that. I could see we got decent traffic on the page that we created for these things. But, you know, in terms of tracking how many people actually downloaded it, we, we aren't able to do that. But I'm satisfied that just by virtue of the fact that we provided this thing for them. Awesome. So, I imagine goal setting was also part of the campaign planning process and anyone who's um, heard me present before or been on one of my webinars knows that I always like to spend a little bit of time on, on goals and measuring success and kind of laying that out. So why don't you lay out um, what the goals were for the campaign and, um, and then we'll go from there into the actual management of the campaign. Sure, sure. So I'll be the first to admit that I'm, I, I enjoy the touchy-feely things too, but, you know, it's always good to be, you know, when you feel like you're doing good for someone or you're doing, you know, you're providing a good service and that sort of thing. Um, the, 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 the good thing about this situation is we were able to create, like, we, we had a baseline from which to work with. For instance, this first goal, increase engagement with accepted students. So, um, so we could essentially see what was normally uh, what kind of normal activity that we get on a Friday and Saturday. Um, and so we, we have that baseline. And what I did was kind of as I was collecting those conversations, I could go back later um, and see exactly what kind of increased um, what kind of what kind of increase in, in actual tweets and, and responses and, and what kind of you know reach we had. And, uh, well, I think we're probably talking about those numbers later, but Essentially, we're looking to increase engagement beyond what was normally happening on a Friday and Saturday. That was a lot of words. I just used a lot. <laughs> I just used a lot. I could have said six words for the. Oh boy. Okay. It's cool. The frog yeah. in your throat is just helping you right now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So the goal, okay. the next goal, should be up. Yeah, there it is. Um, so yeah, I mean, showcasing the students' pride and excitement about joining. I mean, we're 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 excited that these students are, are here. I mean, I am. 
um, you know, my 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 excitement that I express from the account is is not is not fake. It's genuine. I'm a Gator. I'm excited for these new Gators. I'm ex I'm I'm encouraged that they're excited to be here. So what I mean by showcasing the exciting the unit, you know, the the Gator Nation and their excitement is something that we can share in, through retweets. You know, whenever um, whenever I, I retweet a student from the main account, generally speaking. The steps in the process, the steps that uh, that that occur are, uh, uh, I get a retweet, I get a favorite, and then I get an OMG from the student. It's always a thrill to see that. But they get excited, and when they're acknowledged, not only by logging in and getting, you know, getting admitted and getting that response. Which is so. This is our opportunity to be that person to congratulate. Congratulate them from the university. And uh, I think to submit information and contributions to, and contributions to the discussion. So this is basically talking about um, you know getting the other units involved, um, letting them know that there's an opportunity here. You know, letting the campus community know about those really big important events. You know, commencement being another one of them, and what what the plans are. Letting them know about the, a hashtag or any kind of other organized efforts. You know, we we produce special videos for commencement every year. Uh, something kind of a an emotional piece. You know, let let the other units know about that so they can then share those things with their students. I think what we found in this case, when when I connected with and encouraged these other units, what what I found was that um, as soon as the floodgates opened and students were were talking. And uh, shouting from the rooftops, um, I, I started to see a trickle of conversation on the hashtag from other units saying, "Oh, this is great! The water's fine. You know, jump in." Um, and then pretty soon, we had a bunch of different units, uh, you know, programs, coaches, uh, colleges. Um, you know, they were all they were all jumping in on the conversation and providing their own welcome uh, to uh, to the to our new students. Challenging admission staff to explore new and creative solutions. Um, I mean, what we're talking about here is is a change in what is considered, you know, con convention uh, in admissions. I mean, you know, it it can be difficult to to talk to, replace the word admission with any other unit at a university or a college. You know, some people have they have a process and they're very comfortable with that process. And they feel they know their audience, and they feel they know what's what's best. And so it's always good to engage with, uh, not to challenge. I didn't feel that might not even be this, the, a good word, but um, but to at least encourage or and, and to give them some something to chew on uh, regarding what the benefits are of doing something new, and to you know something like tweeting. Um, you know, it only took me an an hour or so to convince. Our director to add the hashtag. Um, part of that conversation was talking about how nice his office was. I hadn't been in there in a while, so it was chit a lot of some of it was chit chat. But once we got down to business and I explained to him exactly what happened, and I had some, you know, some case study information from the previous year, it wasn't very difficult to kind of say, "Look, we want to be, we want to do things better. I, here's how I think we can do things better. We we need to, you know, let's embrace these students even more than we already do." Create awareness about UF social media accounts or your own social media accounts. So the opportunity that arises from other units getting involved in the conversation is that this is a unique opportunity. You know, they can, you know, these units can wait until our, our orientation or preview when they're inundated with all of these, uh, you know, all of these, all of this information about every you know, campus organization and, and how to pay your bills and how to do financial aid, and all these things they throw at you during the two days of, of uh, preview. Um, you, you, this is another, an, another opportunity to introduce yourself as a program and to say, here's a welcome. Maybe you hadn't even thought about the College of Fine Arts. And I bring them up because they're a terrific example of a, of a, of a college that jumped into the conversation that, and not only introduced themselves, but also shared links to their programs and frequently asked questions. And they were very well prepared to respond to students and to send them to locations on their site that would kind of answer some questions and to maybe perhaps intrigue students who were 
undecided about what program they would get into to kind of, uh, you know, get the ball rolling in that direction. So, I mean, there, there's some great opportunities. I, I saw, you know, student government jumped in. They did a fantastic job. I think their particular tweet, their welcome, was the most retweeted uh, tweet of the night, and that's even more than our main account. So, uh, you know, I think they did it themselves a, a terrific service by introducing them to these new students. Now these new students are, are they get an opportunity to follow these accounts and learn about uh, what they do even before they go to preview. I think that's, that's a great opportunity there. Did, uh, how many, every time I say the word opportunity, I should put a, like a coin in the opportunity jar or something. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I just made $27, folks. There you are. Um, so just for everyone knows, I've seen the back channel. A lot of people, Bruce, are talking about how awesome those Facebook and Twitter images were. So I just tweeted out a link to the site. If you're on Twitter, I use the hashtag SchoolWorks and tweeted out a link to the site where um, you can go and check out all the Facebook timeline photos, the avatars, etc. cetera. Um, but let's move into talking about the big day, which was February 8th. Uh, you know, I, I guess if this were my day, I would want to leisurely wake up, have a relaxing cup of coffee, and, you know, of course, bide my time until 5 p.m. when the, when the storm strikes. Uh, is that what you did, or did your day look a little different? Hey, Bruce, are you still with us? You know, it helps hey. if I shut up. I was coughing, so I put on the mute. Sorry about that. Oh, I was, I was just brilliant. You guys all missed it. Um, <laughs> oh, well. Um, so, so actually, that, that, I know. That, that morning, um, I, was in a confer I was at a conference in D.C., so and, you know, I won't go through the entire itinerary, but I was running around the airport like a maniac so I could get back, back home around 2 p.m. <laughs> um, so I really didn't need that much in the way of caffeine. I was pretty much... Uh, you know, um, I was pretty hyper from all of the travel and so forth. But I got home, you know, put, set up my laptop, set up uh, a couple of screens, uh, iPad going uh, to get ready for um, 5 o'clock. Um, I also set up a thing called, uh, uh, I was doing some research on trying to figure out the best solution for tracking hashtags. And so what I ended up using was a thing, uh, a service called hashtracking.com. Now, this is by no means any kind of like endorsement or anything. They just happen to have something that I found was kind of useful for the time. There are other products out there like Topsy, I think, that'll do similar work. But uh, that's what I ended up using. Um, I also, this was fun. I set up Google Analytics because now that they have the kind of you can get real-time stats, what I put on my, um, on my iPad was the main page of the real-time stats. And uh, so I could see as they were clicking in and downloading our images, they could see the, uh, the different... Uh, I could see the different locations on the on the on the map, um, where they were coming from. So th that was kind of fun. So it sounds like you, when 5 p.m. hit, you absolutely ready, and I imagine you were also pretty excited. So why yes. don't you tell us what actually happened? I was I was also caffeinated, just to be fair. Um, <laughs> so so 5 p.m. 5 p.m. hit, and some tweets started trickling in. Uh, but what we also found were some other tweets that said, I, I can't get in, there's something wrong with the system and so forth. Uh, so we were, having some, we were have, having some technical difficulties with our servers. Uh, a lot of students were hitting them all at once with multiple devices, and that kind of made it difficult for other people to get in. Uh, I also monitored, like I did last year, general keywords like University of Florida and Florida Gators, things like that, so I could recover any students that, uh, didn't, that got admitted but missed that hashtag. Uh, you know, it's certainly possible that it was too subtle. So I wanted to make sure to cover that, cover that base as well. So uh, any of those students that were talking about us um, and not using the hashtag, I would inform them about the hashtag so that we would not miss out on them. Um, since, since there was such issue with the servers, uh, the decisions were kind of spread out as opposed to at one time, students were getting their decision and pulling out, uh, pulling out of the, the system and then other students were able to get in. And so the actual tweets didn't die down until 1 a.m., um, but that's okay. That's okay. I, I kept my energy up and, and uh, uh, was able to kind of explain to, uh, you know, still respond to students. Um, but it was an interesting time because I kind of had, a, I kind of had, had to do, a two, have to have two different modes. On Twitter, I was responding to the students that were admitted. On Facebook, we did a post apologizing for the server issues. And so I was kind of have to, I had to use a more formal tone on Facebook to kind of apologize and explain 
whereas on on Twitter I can be more conversational and friendly. Not that I wasn't friendly on Facebook, but you guys you guys know what I'm talking about. So what wound up happening to the other departments on campus? So you said that if you did tweet, you know, who participated, were you pleased with the results? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I was pleased. I mean, I'm thrilled. My colleagues are terrific. Um, it was like Field of Dreams. You know, we, we built a hashtag, and they certainly did come. Um, <laughs> they, what, what I noticed was as these conversations start to bubble up, as, as the admit uh, decisions were being, finally being released and students could get them and could respond, uh, I was noticing a lot of my other uh, colleagues were jumping in. Here's that, that example about um, uh, the student government group. Um, they jumped in and congratulated students. That got retweeted enormous amount of times. Um, and... I also run the alumni account. Oh, sorry, I was going to mention I also oh, run the yeah. alumni accounts. Okay. So, um, so I wanted to encourage our alums to also respond and, you know, provide like advice. And what I found more was uh, some of our alumni, alumni were saying, well, oh, I remember when I was admitted. I sure wish I could go back to school. That was fun too. But the, as you can see on this page, Amanda Butler, she's our Gator basketball coach. She jumped in. No one, I, I didn't even know she would know about this, but she jumped in and and welcomed students. I thought that was a terrific thing. You even have U.S. Student Health down at the bottom there saying, "Don't forget your immunization form." You know, so there was a little bit of, "All right, you're almost here. You're not quite here yet. You need that immunization form, buddy." So here are a couple tweets on the screen from some of the students, but what were what were some of the more memorable interactions that you had on Twitter or Instagram? Um, well, what, there are a couple that actually stick out in my mind. Uh, there was one student that said, "I've always, I've always been a Gator, and now it's official." And he did one of those Instagram split screen deals where he had a picture of himself as like a four year old wearing Gator gear, you know, and then a picture of him in orange and blue with a huge smile on his face and it's like you know that that was just ter I mean that just made me feel great um, and I know he felt great uh, as well there was another student that um, that literally posted a photo of her doing a backflip on our football field uh, wearing she was wearing like a cap and gown or something um, and so she was literally you know jumping for joy over the decision so that's a, those are the two that really stick out in my mind. But I mean, there's, I mean, there were a lot of tweets that went by, and I, you know, was uh, trying to respond to every one of them as best I could. Nice. I just tweeted out a link to that Instagram where the girl is doing a backflip. So if uh, oh, everyone's on the back channel, hashtag social works, you can check that link out. So yeah, that, I, I love that photo. Yeah, I, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> if right. I could do a backflip, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so I'm just impressed that she's doing it. But yeah. but then on right. top of that, doing it for UF is great. is great. So let's talk a little bit about campaign management. We've got some bullet points sure. up on the screen that show mm -hmm. off your suggestions for our right. webinar attendees for how to manage a campaign like this. Um, why don't mm -hmm. you talk us through these? Right. So I, I would probably move drink coffee uh, higher up. I know this isn't an ordered list, but I did have to <laughs> caffeinate it at one point uh, because you know we were we were going until one in the morning. But um, you know, collecting the conversations, you know, figuring out a, um, figuring out some kind of uh, way of of saving those conversations, be it in a storify. Um, I think that you know, Twitter now is 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 not limiting your ability to search past two weeks, so that makes things a little bit easier. But I would definitely figure out a way to. I, I like Storify, so maybe I am promoting Storify a little bit, but I I would definitely keep those because those um, you know that there's going to be somebody that wants to learn about what you did or uh, wants to understand what you did and why it's important and how it was you know and all the positive conversations that are happening. So you know I would definitely suggest you know um, you know creating some some means of presenting that content to you know to a higher up, maybe a VP heard about it and they want to hear about it. Uh, measuring sentiment. Um, if there's any possible way to find out um, if people are, are tweeting good or bad, oh, what their overall sentiment is, there are many kind of tools out there that will let you do that. Um, what I found, again, I say what I found is that sentiment has been um, positive overall. And just like last year, I didn't see, I, I may have seen one or two tweets that were negative and mentioned us. 
Uh, there were some students that um, did not get the decision they were hoping for. And, uh, you know, even those students weren't like mad at the university. They were just like, they were disappointed. And so, you know, we, we responded to the students and tried to give, provide some other opportunities or options for them. Um, if, you're in a, if you're in a team, if you have the opportunity to work with a team, and this is what I plan to do the next time we do any type of hashtag campaign, uh, use a tool like Hootsuite or Sprout Social. Uh, I'm kind of fond of Sprout Social these days. Um, and assign tweets to your team. You know, what, be, because ultimately, the fourth, the, this will help you with the fourth thing on this list, which is give unique and personal responses. Um, it's very difficult to respond to everybody. I certainly tried, and I, I think I was pretty successful at it, but the more people you have helping you, uh, the better, and the more opportunity you have to answer to everyone, answer everyone and to provide a unique response. My concern is that you, that you don't want to just do kind of a cut and paste response to every single person that says, yay, I got in, because if they get wind of that, if they see your Twitter, you know, your Twitter feed, they just see the same response for everyone, it just kind of seems hollow and disingenuous. Um, you know, I, I ended up, just to entertain myself, um, or maybe because I'm nutty, um, we were getting close to uh, midnight, and I said, well, it, it seems like things are dying down. Who, haven't, who have I not spoken to? Uh, I, want to I want to congratulate everyone. Um, and of course, that <laughs> that encouraged another flood of question, of responses. Me, 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 me. So I ended up trying to figure out creative ways of talking to them personally. Maybe looking at their bio on Twitter. Maybe kind of looking at the way they worded things and responding specifically. I am the most excited I've ever been in my life. Really? What is that like? You know, uh, some other s s person said I haven't been responded to, and I respond. I said back to them something like. Well, that's because I was saving this for you, and I gave them a link to an MP3 of our fight song. I sent another person the alma mater. You know, just there are You know, we're, the people that, do, for the most part, the people that are doing social media are pretty creative. Come up with creative ways of responding to people. Personalize, uh, personalize your responses. Make them personal. And drink coffee. And drink coffee. So let's share some of the results. I know that anyone who signed up for this webinar saw some of the results um, when they signed up, but right. why don't you walk us through them and more? Okay. Um, so for the eight hours following the release of the decisions, the hashtag had 966 unique Twitter con contributors. So that, that was pretty terrific. Um, 944 original tweets, and the total tweets were uh, 1,537. Um, reach, uh, 370,000 plus unique users. That's pretty impressive. I mean, considering, you know, th that's reaching people that, you know, aren't necessarily connected with our accounts. Um, those people are now potentially going to be following your accounts and are aware of the way you encourage and treat these students that are newly admitted. Uh, I really like this number, 4.57 million, million Twitter timeline deliveries. That's basically how many impressions uh, those tweets had. Um, I also measured and saw that we had 416 new Twitter followers over an eight-hour period, which is pretty good. And the 117 images posted to Instagram, again, that's the eight hours. Um, but what I found is that people are still using the hashtag, and uh, they are still uh, use, they're still posting. So there's, there's a well over 400 uh, Instagram photos um, with the hashtag, and they're all they're all just a lot of fun. Hello. Ah. <laughs> the slides oh, this should be changing for you. Ah, this. Oh, right. Okay. So here's here's kind of an example. What I did was I looked at the two days. I was trying to compare a typical two days um, on on our uh, in terms of engagement and and uh, tweeting and so forth on our on our Twitter account um, versus the decision day and the day after. So you can see new followers, uh, 416, what we normally get is around, you know, one, you know, 150 or so. Uh, if you want to go to the next slide, we'll talk about the next, uh, the next thing, which is, um, right, incoming messages. How many people are tweeting, tweeting at our account on a Friday and Saturday? Typically not that high, uh, but 555 is pretty impressive. Um, Here's another representation of, of impressions on the next slide. Um, the only thing that, uh, you'll notice that we did have 2.284 million impressions on um, February 15th and 16th. Got to blame the Harlem Shake for that. 
Um, <laughs> and, and also Erin Andrews, she's one of our, she's, she's, she's an alum and she actually retweeted the video of the Harlem, our Harlem Shake video. So that, that was a kind of an, I would say that is kind of an outlier too. We normally don't get that sort of response. So, um, and finally, you know, the number of messages that are typically sent out of our account, 145, that's a, another atypical thing. So, um, you know, we're, we're not to say we're silent, but we're not tweeting nearly as much as we did um, for the decision days. You know, one of the questions that came over Twitter, yeah. and, and I've been collecting them to save it for Q&A, but it's kind of relevant right now. Um, yes. A few people are asking, you know, first of all, how did you capture these results? And secondly, how many people worked on that Twitter response during, uh, you know, the February 8th, 5 p.m. to 1 a.m.? Well, in terms of the main accounts, I was the only one uh, doing, I was the only one tweeting from the main uh, University of Florida Twitter, uh, Instagram, um, Facebook, all of that sort of thing. So if that's the question, yeah, it was just me. I was I was a team of one. I've since added uh, some staff, and I'm wor uh, working towards incorporating them in these sorts of things. And that's why I'm suggesting that other people do that because, as well, try and get maybe an intern or somebody else to help you out with those because uh, you know I can imagine because I you know as excited as I was about it, it's easy to get burned out. Uh, what was the other question again? I'm sorry. Uh, people are just wondering how you collected and measured these results. Was it that hashtracking.com? Did you yes. use other tools? Did you go and count? No, I can't count. Um, <laughs> I um, I used hash tracking. That was really that was uh, a pretty useful device. Um, it uh, you know I set up the hashtag and it basically collected all the all the mentions with that particular hashtag and uh, um, it, it it will track one hashtag for free. So that was my one shot at getting this, uh, at, at taking advantage of this opportunity, and I did. And so it does, you know, pro it did provide me all of that information that was on the previous slide, the 966 individual Twitter contributors on and on. There's another one, the to Topsy Pro uh, will also do some pretty impressive things in terms of collecting and, and, and doing research on the use of individual hashtags, but it's, uh, you know, it may be price prohibitive for some people, so you know, I go for low cost or free tools whenever I can, but now that I've used this hashtag and have had success, I'm probably encouraged to do more hashtag use and I'm probably going to have to try and find a solution that will do that sort of collection. Oh, it's our Storify. Yeah, what, what was the point of collecting the conversations in right. the Storify? Well, as I said before, uh, it's for your own benefit because, um, you know, once you get two or three months out, you want to kind of you know, you want to be able to explain what happened to other people who ne not, are not necessarily as well versed on social as you are. So this was that opportunity. Uh, first and foremost, though, the reason I created it was so I could have something to give to the admissions folks, so they can in turn share with their staff and see that, you know, their decision to post that hashtag was a good one, was effective. Um, and so that's why I created this thing. Um, it was also to, you know, because Storefy allows you to create some context around a tweet, um, it, it, it helps kind of explain what people are seeing. You know, sometimes you see a, you know, see a tweet by itself and what, what, is, what is going on here? Um, I'm usually wondering what's going on here. So, um, so that, that's why I did that. Um, you know, for admissions, ancillary benefit being that I could share with other people, I could share with social that social works hashtag and webinars and things like that so people can get a better understanding of how things went. Sure. Yeah. And I know that you also received a few head nods from yes. the higher ed community as well. Do you want to right. share, you, you know, toot your own horn here for a second because this would um, be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it was, I, you know, I have a lot of respect for my colleagues and, you know, I, I have a lot of good uh, friends on uh, some Facebook groups that uh, that do the same kind of work I do around the country, and so it was nice to hear from them. Um, you know, I didn't do this to get them to pay attention. I did this to get you know to pay attention to our students. But it was nice to see people like uh, I have a colleague uh, T.J. Logan. Um, he works actually at the University of Florida. He works in student affairs. I had no idea he knew what was going. He knew we were doing this, this blog post that was just like, I mean, I'm going to hire him as my uh, you know as, as the head of PR for. Bruce Floyd Industries because he just uh, he just wrote a tremendous blog post about how everybody jumped into the conversation and it was terrific and 
you know, a lot of people were responding not only to that, but to his blog post and his description of how it was organized. Uh, a lot of people from all over the country were saying, man, we got to do this, and I'm going to pass the word along, and what a, what a proud, exciting moment. Uh, you know, it, it was, I mean, it was, it was great. It was really great yeah. to see that people noticed. Yeah, it feels good. Um, so, you know, is you you said UF17 is living on. Uh, what what's going on? Are right, people are still tweeting, Instagramming, what's happening? Well, you know, it's it, it when I when I see the mountain when they show the uh, when they show the graph of all the tweets uh, for that hashtag, but instead of leveling off to zero, it's leveling off to like 20, 30, 40 uh, tweets a day using the hashtag. So what what's happened now is we've created a common point in the, on Twitter for these students to converse with each other and to um, and it also gives us the opportunity to direct conversations more specifically to that class so whenever uh, whenever I tweet something that I think is, is 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 not I think the general audience could find it useful but I want to I want to make sure that our UF class of, of 2017 pays attention I can add that additional hashtag onto it and uh, I think it helps to kind of direct the conversation. It's kind of a visual cue to those students to say, oh, that's for me. I need to look at that. And I've seen some other, other units on campus taking advantage of that as well. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that student's excited. Look at that. Yeah, and she's a pretty girl. And she's not under a tree, but she's near a tree. So I yeah, feel like we filled our quota yeah. for, uh, you know, higher education and girls and trees in this webinar. Yes, girl, girl <laughs> using generic computer. Right on. Yeah. Um, so, so what would you do differently, you know, right. for hashtag UF18? How are you going to improve this for next year? Well, just I mean, in terms of taking care of the tweets, like I said before, um, trying to do it all yourself can be very difficult and is difficult. Um, I've, I've, I'm pretty coordinated running all of these screens and keeping up with all of this stuff. But, you know, it, the more people that you can integrate into this process, the better off are you'll be in terms of you know, creating unique responses and making sure that everybody has been individually um, acknowledged. Um, I, I'll probably do a better job now that now that the other units know about this thing. Um, I'll, I I think that on their on their end, they're probably going to schedule this. More units are going to schedule this as part of their lives for decision date. In other words, they're going to be they're going to un have a. full understanding of how it all works now that they've seen it and so they'll put I think I'm going to work the afternoon evening shift on this particular day because that's when the conversations are happening um, so I, I think that's what's um, oh and, and I probably won't schedule a conference on decision day either that was probably a bad <laughs> idea yeah I probably shouldn't have done that for questions and so please don't mind me as I kind of exit out of my screen here and get the control panel where I need it to be so I can actually uh, take a look at the questions that have probably come in over the GoToWebinar control panel. All right, we're back up. So um, I do, before we go into q and though, I have some favorite tweets that I would like to read out from the uh -oh. session with Bruce. I'm sure that you weren't paying attention to the back channel because you were doing all the talking. So um, let me share with you a couple of my favorite tweets. There were um, a lot of people retweeting what you said around not worrying about insulting those who didn't get in and, and making sure that you celebrate those who did. So a lot of people retweeted that and I sure. did. I thought too that that was a okay. really great point. Um, Sherry tweeted, get student organizations involved in Admit Day. Their voice online gives admitted students a snapshot of community and student life, which I think is an awesome uh, point and definitely something that you stress for, and I really loved that tweet. And then my third favorite tweet um, was from Meg. She said, don't in caps don't overlook Instagram with admitted students. We've had a lot of success on this platform in engaging with them. Um, who said, and who I, said that again? Meg from St. Lawrence University. Meg, absolutely. So. I'm clapping. I'm applauding you. It, it, Yay! Insta Instagram, um, I, I, did, I, I was using Staticgram, and uh, one of the things that I didn't mention in terms of the engagement, what I, I was going through, through It's important. They're incredibly engaged on Instagram. 
in a general sense, our Instagram account uh, for for UF is uh, we get incredible results from from Instagram. Our 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 fans on there are terrific, um, and and particularly you know letting those engaged students know that we are on Instagram by liking their uh, you know their posts using the hashtag. You know they're all following us now. They're all following me. I mean, it's it's so real and it's so. Uh, I my face hurts from smiling. It 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 just it's terrific. We also have one more tweet that I can't help but mention. It just came through, and it says the true measure of success for hashtag UF17 is that it is leveling off at 20 tweets a day, not that it was big a big number in one day. And Jack tweeted that, and I have to say that um, a few people were asking Bruce, you know. Yeah. What, can this work for an institution that has rolling admission decisions or an institution that mails the decisions? And I feel like uh, Jacqueline's tweet really gets at that because um, mm -hmm. I would say, you know, I want to hear what you have to say, Bruce, but my yeah. answer to that question is that yes. Something like this absolutely can work. You might not have that five-hour crazy excitement that you experience, but right. that institution, if they push that hashtag on um, admit letter, they're going to see success over time. And making sure that they're measuring that hashtag over time is going to be really important in that case. Well, I mean, I don't know how to improve on that response. I, I, I do agree very strongly with what you said. It, you know, so you you may not have that explosive event. You know, it's 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 going to be a slow burn. But the whole point of this ex exercise is to create a community and to make the students feel welcome. So you know, if the motivation, you know, the fact that we have a launch date, that we have a decision date, it was not my motivation. My motivation was to to encourage and welcome the students. So regardless of whether you have that decision date or if it's rolling admissions or whatever, you need to welcome the students. And you have that opportunity, and so you should definitely take advantage of that. So, are you following through with this hashtag all the way from Oregon to Donna at Etown? Just wanted to see your thoughts on that. You know, to see if you're if you're really going to get all the mileage that you can from the tag. Well, we certainly use it when we're trying to communicate something very specific to that group. Um, Fortunately, you know, we're talking about um, you know things like orientation and so forth. One of the one of the very active accounts was our new student and family programs who runs our orientation. So they were terrific on decision day, and they continue to use they continue to use uh, the hashtag to communicate with those students. Um, so they you know it, we are getting as much traction as we can from it. We may uh, we, we're also we've already been talking about. Um, a hashtag for our orientation event. It's called Preview. Um, so we're we've already talked about the optimal name. You know, the previous. This is kind of a good example. I mean, I'm treating. You know, these are these orientation sessions are like mini events, and we have a lot of them. Preview isn't like decision day. We don't just have one day where people come in and get orientation. So that's, mm -hmm. you know, obviously that's the challenge, but we do, we do still want to use the hashtag and we will, um, and we'll track it and we'll see a lot of questions and we can crowdsource and, you know, we can do some, some market research and we can find out what's going right and what's going wrong with, um, yes, absolutely, we're going to leverage it as best we can for as long as we can. Um, as long as students use it, then we will be using it as well. So we do have a number of questions left to answer, and we're absolutely going to get to every single one of those. But I do want to point out that it's 2.59 Eastern. So if folks have to drop off, uh, do not fear, because we're still recording, and we'll be sharing that archive. And we're going to keep answering questions. So if you have to leave right now, 
feel free. <laughs> you're, it's totally okay. We know you're, we're running a little over, um, but yeah. we will keep answering questions. So if your question hasn't been answered yet, stay tuned. Um, right. Before people drop out, though, I do want to officially thank everyone for attending the webinar and remind everybody that there's a very short survey and it helps me figure out if we actually delivered something worthwhile today. And also, it helps us over at MStoner figure out what types of webinars you would like to see in the future. Um, I can tell you that this webinar came from uh, a few different ideas, but mainly from the fact that some feedback in, in previous surveys identified that people wanted to see webinars like this one. So you, we really read and and listen to what you have to say. But all right, public service announcement over. We're going to hop back into Q&A, and I do see that the majority of folks are sticking with us, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, Super. Quick question. Thanks. Woo! Quick Ooh. question from Elizabeth. Uh, she's wondering what is the UF Instagram name? If she wants to look it up, what is it? Um, it's U Florida. We tried to use, we try and use the same naming convention across all of our accounts, so. Uh, Instagram.com slash UFlorida. Cool. Yeah. All right. So earlier on in the webinar, someone asked, was there a reason that you included the, the hashtag UF17 on the Facebook cover photo, even though technically hashtags don't really have a function on Facebook? Um, yes, just for increased awareness. I, I, you know, I mm -hmm. am aware that, uh, that, um, that, students, that, that people don't use hashtags on Facebook. But... Um, but it, it was it was to create awareness. I mean, you know, if you see a if you see the hashtag on a TV, it doesn't mean you can tweet the TV. You know, it's just a means of, <laughs> it's just a means of showing something that you can do on the, your second screen. So um, right. it, it was basically an awareness thing. Right, right. I, so I'm, um, that guy, I'm that guy that uses hashtags on Facebook too. So. <laughs> yeah, you I'm know, really sometimes I, I feel like hashtags, like I'm the girl who speaks hashtags sometimes, you know, I'm like hashtag just saying. So I feel like That's hashtags right. have like transcended Twitter in a lot of ways and, and people aren't totally opposed to seeing them in other mediums. But I, I thought your answer there was really good. Raising awareness of the hashtag so people know when they are on Twitter what to do with it makes sense. Yeah, and, um, and to be really, fair, if we look, if we look at yeah. the history of Facebook, I mean, over time they started using at uh, you know, the, the users drive the activity and, and the future um, um, implementations of these platforms. Um, you know, we, we, inve we users invented the retweet, and, and so, you know, that's why there is a, an official retweet on Twitter. Uh, I would not be surprised at all if hashtags became in something that you could do an index search on. So um, I'm just going to push that issue until they actually allow us to use <laughs> hashtags officially. So there, arms folded. Yeah. Yeah, you, you've heard it here first, folks. When the hashtag comes out on Facebook, Bruce will be taking all the credit for it. Um, okay, so this is kind of a follow-up. Um, the 20% word rule certainly applies to cover photos for Facebook pages. Do you know if it applies to cover photos for students? Too. And my instinct is that it doesn't because it's a personal Facebook profile and you can do whatever you want with your cover. Um, I know that rule does exist absolutely mm -hmm. for Facebook pages, but I've never heard of it existing for the personal profile. You? Uh oh, in terms of what you can do with the image if you can add text? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Um, yeah. I think it's, I think they're, t I, I, you know, I, and I've looked at that rule and I think that it's talking about um, adding a uh, like sale price something or other right. it, you, you can't li you know if people want to create a design out of out of text you know they, they can't limit that but they're what I think what they're discouraging is things like this week only 30% off or something like that I don't I, yeah. uh, that's that was my interpretation of it um, and I'm sticking to it so um, <laughs> you know I, I don't think I, I you know for, for me, if, if Facebook wants to argue the fact that I'm not trying to kind of encourage students and increase engagement and I'm not trying to sell anything, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. That's right. All right. So what, um, what, after the, you know, after the campaign is over, um, I know you've mentioned a lot of tools. Uh, is there any way to, 
collect the conversations once the campaign ends? Are you still are you still using the same tools you've already been mentioning? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I am still using the same tools. Um, I I once the dust settled, I started looking at other possibilities, other tools. Um, you know, in in terms of like what can I do in the future to make this thing better to keep keep track. Um, I mentioned Topsy Pro as an option earlier. Um, some of you may know Topsy, the, the, the free service, as a kind of a social search tool. Um, Topsy Pro does more um, detailed analytics about a partic particular search term, but it is. Uh, uh, I have some justifications that would hopefully get it included in the budget. Some other things, you know, because I don't just do. Uh, marketing tweets and happy-go-lucky stuff. We also have like crisis management, things like that, and right. there are things that Topsy Pro can do that can help me in terms of like informing me when sent when there's a a spike in sentiment or a spike in mentions and things like that. So, um, but yeah, that's one of the tools I use. I am an I'm I'm very much a user of like on social better because um, the, the the I think the reporting. Uh, that it does is is um, yeah. more attractive, easier to work with, um, and is not limited like Hootsuite's is. Um, so so that's my jam. I understand a lot of people like other things for different reasons because of their own workflow. Um, that's just kind of what I'm using right now. Nice. But. So Nicole at uh, Champlain College is wondering. Um, mm -hmm. she, well, she's saying that they have an internal hashtag, which I happen to know is probably she's probably referring to their hashtag Camp Champ, um, and that would be something that's unknown to prospective students, but something that their current students, their faculty, their staff, the community uses. She's right. wondering if you would suggest um, <laughs> that she creates a new hashtag to promote if she were going to do a campaign like this. Or should she try to spread the word about this one that exists that the internal communities already embrace? Well, so <clears throat> excuse me, I got to clear my throat. Um, so, so we're talking about the difference between different campaigns. I mean, I don't know what Camp Champ is, what it means, but if you have a campaign that means something different, you wouldn't want to use the same hashtag necessarily. Um, right. Yeah, I th I think that Camp Champ is just something that people are talking about that community, the Champlain College community. That's what the hashtag that they use. You know, right. so I'm sure most institutions have that. You know, right. hashtag that that refers to their institutions. And, mm -hmm. and at Champlain, it happens to be Camp gotcha. Champ. So do you, I think I understand. So yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> so I I think I, what I would say is that you know like we have hashtags that are more general like. Go Gators is a hashtag that we use. Um, that would Go Gators is kind of like uh, you know it's it's kind of a general positive hashtag. You can obviously use more than one hashtag. So if you were doing you know you, some of my tweets would have said um, you know congratulations I'm glad that you're here hashtag UF17 also hashtag Go Gators. Um, mm -hmm. You can kind of see what the difference is between those two hashtags. Um, Go Gators I use for all bunch of different things. UF17 is more specific. So it is possible right. to kind of mix them up and, and use them the, any way that you want. Um, yeah. 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 Camp Champ. <laughs> Rock on. Yeah, Rock I think on. it's definitely appropriate to have a hashtag that's really specific to the particular mm -hmm. class because it's like the, the health um, unit on your campus, so the reminder about the immunization record certainly would have looked a bit odd with hashtag go gators after it, but yeah. was very relevant to hashtag US17, so that, that sure. makes sense. All right, Absolutely. our last question um, is from Elizabeth again. She's wondering if you think it's appropriate for admission offices to have their own Facebook page, Twitter page is it appropriate for the admissions offices to have their own and do you think it could possibly cause overlap in information with another page um, I'm gonna do that generic it depends thing mm -hmm. <laughs> it's 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 really hard to say um, what what when you talk about a Facebook page are we talking about a personal page or an account you know is it you know I am you know Bruce Floyd admissions officer and it's it's a company page um, there's some different things there I mean you can get into some boundary issues if you're becoming friends with people that are trying to get admitted um, 
you know, if you become friends with them and that sort of thing, that, that kind of makes things a little, little kind of weird. Um, I, I, uh, on campus, and they, they talk about creating a new account, um, I always try and ask them what their goals are, and can those goals be accomplished by not having to create this brand new thing that they then have to keep up with. I mean, keeping up with all of these accounts um, is, is not a small task, um, especially trying to create relevant content on Facebook with the, you know, edge rank the way it is. Um, it's difficult, and so if you're trying to release information and you want to be targeted, do you really need your own personal account? Uh, uh, do you need your own company Facebook account when you could go to an admissions account and provide that same information? I, I'm not so sure. I'd have to look at that more specifically, how things are being done or perhaps not done on the main admissions account. If there's, not a, if there's some need that's not being met and that's what's driving these admissions officers to do this thing, um, you know, I'd, ha I'd have to kind of look at that and judge it in that regard. I know that's not an answer, but that's the best I have right now. Go hashtags. Yeah, you know, I think, and I'm just tweeting out, uh, well, if Twitter would let me tweet, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to tweet out an article that our strategist Susan Evans wrote. Uh, there it goes. It's just sent. Um, it, she wrote this article on social media governance with the assumption that institutions are absolutely moving to uh, having multiple social accounts and that governance is now really important. And I think her point is, you know, gone, gone, gone are the days that web, one website ruled the entire web presence for an institution. And so right. it's almost as the social media is following suit that it used to be that one Facebook page, one Twitter feed could accurately capture an entire institution's social presence. But, but but um, doesn't really work and, and doesn't work as, as much as one website for um, everything that you could possibly have on campus works. So I, I, I think, yeah, so I think that you, I, know, I you could yeah. go either way. It, it, and I think the answer is it depends on the institution. Um, yes. but, but I would say, you know, if you're on Twitter, check out that article that I just sent out um, because it was written with that assumption. Uh, and what we're seeing with our clients that people are moving to, um, you know, multiple social channels. So anyway, thanks everybody uh, so Thank much. You. I know many of you have stuck with us this far and we really appreciate your extra 11 minutes. Um, if you have any questions to follow up with Bruce or me after this webinar, definitely tweet us or uh, you can email me mallory.wood at mstoner.com and I'll make sure Bruce gets all of your questions. So I'll, I'll collect them and send them on to Bruce. So thank you again so much. Just a quick reminder to fill out that survey uh, when you leave. And, and this is me saying goodbye, Bruce, passing it to you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for sticking around a little bit longer. And uh, I appreciate all the great questions. And uh, thank you for spending your, your afternoon with me. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your afternoon, and we'll see you next time, hopefully in a few weeks, for the uh, strategy webinar on March 25th. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.